So today we're going to learn how to set up a Vue 3 TypeScript project within an Adonis.js project. So first things first, let's go ahead and get our new Adonis.js project created. So let's do npm init Adonis TS app at latest. And let's call this Adonis Vue 3 TS example. Set this up as a web project using the default name that we just set up. We'll skip on ESLint for right now, but we do want Webpack Encore. So let's hit true for that. It's going to go through and install those dependencies based off of our selections there. Okay, so now that's created. Let's go ahead and CD into it. So CD Adonis View 3 TS example. And let's go ahead and install the required dependencies that we'll need for both view and TypeScript for view 3. So let's do npm i view at next view loader at next at view slash compiler sfc for the single file components. And then lastly, TS loader. And let's target 9.0.0 there at this present point in time. So let's go ahead and get those installed. Okay, so now whenever it comes to our actual project here, let's go ahead and get it set up just with a normal Vue 3 application first, and then we'll sprinkle in TypeScript on top of it once we get that working. So the first step here is to jump into our webpack config.js file, scroll down to about line 184, and you should see the Encore enable view loader. Go ahead and uncomment that block there and give that a save. Next, let's jump into our resources under JS. And let's jump into our app.js file. Let's go ahead and import create app. And let's also import h from view. And what we'll do is call create app render. And let's set this up as though we were creating an SPA within Adonis. So let's go ahead and create ourselves an app.view component here. That will be a template. We'll just set this up with a very basic test structure here. So let's just do a div with an h1 of test. And let's test whether or not this is working and let's do script setup and our script there and let's just do const is working equals true give that a save jump back into our app.js file here and let's import that component so import app from app.view and let's provide that to the h which is the a render function so we can do app and then the second argument would be any props um I'll just put an empty object here for right now, but know that if you do need to provide any props within there, you can do that there. And then mount, and we'll set up our ID of app here next. So let's jump into our view directory here under welcome.edge, and let's get rid of everything inside of main, and we'll just set main up as our actual app. So just give this an ID of app. So that should be it. View should now be all set up. Let's go ahead and give this a run. So let's do npm run dev, and let's open that up within our browser. Okay. So it looks like we're getting a make sure you're compiling assets here. Looks like I might have requested the page before the assets actually built. So let me just try refreshing. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we got test true. So everything's working there. Next, let's go ahead and get TypeScript sprinkled in to our view. So we've already installed the TS loader that we'll need. However, if we attempt to use the TS config that Adonis uses, we're going to run into all sorts of issues because Adonis has a lot that it's doing to enable you to easily utilize namespaces and contexts. So if we attempted to use this, we would run into all sorts of issues around it trying to find sessions, core, REPL, and since our view application is not going to have access to any of that since it resides on our server, we'll want to just go ahead and create our own tsconfig. So let's do this. Let's call it tsconfig.view.json. You can call it front end or whatever you want there. We'll just put view so that you explicitly know it's needed for the view application. And if we jump into views GitHub here, they have a repository called tsconfig. And this is where we can find the TS configuration for view. Uh, so they have the base TS config here, but then they also have one specific for node and one specific for web. We're going to want to grab the TS config as a baseline starter point. So let's go ahead and copy all of this and dump this into our TS config.view.json file. And then we'll also want to jump back into here and grab what's in the web. So we don't want the extends here because we're going to go ahead and just put this all in the same TS config file. So we just care about what's inside of those compiler options, which should just be the lib and then an empty types array. So you can really drop this anywhere. I'm just going to drop it here on the first block. And before we leave this file, let's add in a couple more things. So first we want to define an includes array, and this will allow us to limit out all of the Adonis files so that we don't have that conflicting interest of attempting to use session on our local view file and things like that. So let's scope this specifically to the resources directory underneath our JS, any files within there. Next, let's also get this set up so that we can import files using the at shorthand. So down here at the bottom, let's add in paths, and this will be an object. 
the one that we'll want to enter in is the at symbol slash star. And then this will be an array pointing to resources, JS and slash. Next, we want to tell our view application to actually use this tsconfig.view.json file. So let's jump into our webpack config.js file, chain off of our enable view loader here, enable TypeScript loader, take the config for this and on config.config file, point it to our tsconfig.view.json file that we just created. Additionally here, we've added the alias for the at character for imports within our tsconfig via the paths object, but we also need to add that alias for webpack as well. So let's do that here. So this will just be at join in our directory name and point it to resources slash JS. Okay, so TypeScript should now be set up. So we should be good to switch our app.js file to an app.ts file. And we'll also need to make that update within our Webpack config here as well. Jump up to your entry for app and change that from a JS file to a TS file there as well. And then we also need to add in a type declaration for our single file components. So within our JS directory here, let's add in a new file. Let's call this index.d.ts. And here we will declare module star.view for all of our view single file component files. And let's import type define component. And let's import that from view. Let's do const component is define component and just provide those arguments there an empty object. There's two empty objects and then the third argument will be any. And then let's export default component. And this will prevent errors anytime that we actually try to import a .view file within our view application. And this should get automatically picked up since it's within our include array. So we shouldn't need to rig this up anywhere. And lastly, before we test this, let's jump into our app.view file and set its lang to TypeScript. So give that a save. Let's jump back into here. Uh, we will want to go ahead and restart our dev server here just so it catches all of those webpack changes okay looks like everything went okay there let's jump back into our application give it a refresh and it looks like everything's going good so let's inspect check out the console make sure we're not getting any hidden errors here nope all is good okay so a couple of things left here first we want to test out our actual component system make sure that that's working as well as our alias for the at character so let's add in a new file here within our js directory and let's put this inside of a components directory and let's just call this test.view. So let's do a template and let's do a div and let's do an h3 and say this is a test. If this is working, you'll see the date below and that h3 and then we'll just do a div and we'll define a variable called DTE, which will just be a date object and let's go ahead and do that. So script lang equals TS make that a setup script and that script and let's do const DTE equals new date. Give that a save, jump to our app.view. Let's just import this. So import test from, and let's use our at alias. So we'll do at components test.view and plop that into our template. Should be able to give that a save, jump back into our browser. And it looks like index.d.ts is not a module. Um, let's try restarting our server. Looks like that might not have gotten picked up. Okay, cool, so there we go. Looks like everything is working a-okay. We have no errors within our console here and we have, this is a test to see if this is working. You'll see the date below and we can see the date below just fine. Lastly, before we round out this lesson, you'll notice that we have a little warning down here. Feature flags, view options API and view prod dev tools are not explicitly defined. Now let's go ahead and get that taken care of. So let's jump back into our Webpack config right down here, jump back down to where our view loader stuff is. And let's add an additional chain off of here, configure define plugin, and this will take in options. And let's set options, underscore, underscore view options, API underscore, underscore, and that's all uppercase and set that to true. That's just going to allow us to utilize the options API within view and options, underscore, underscore view prod dev tools, followed by two underscores there and set that to false. That's going to just disable the dev tools whenever you have your JavaScript files run for production. So whenever you do a prod build. So we should be able to give that a save and let's go reboot our server to catch up that Webpack config change and test it out. So let's give it a refresh and voila, you can see that warning is now gone. So we have view set up with TypeScript inside of our Adonis application successfully. Hopefully everything went well for you. Uh, if it did, please let me know down in the comments or if you had any issues, let me know there as well.